Very neat. Annie here. This is a video response to Michelle. Although there's been a lot of really fantastic videos on the same subject that have come out since I saw hers. And I have a lot to watch yet, too. What I'm going to do is link you to hers below, and then as I see others on the same topic, I'm going to edit this and put them in for you. I don't know if we're all calling it the same thing, that's why. It was a really fascinating discussion that Michelle started in her great video. And I wasn't sure about some of the things she mentioned. I wasn't questioning what she said, don't get me wrong. I just wondered what the conversation had been that led to what she brought to us. And Jer was kind enough to provide a nice detailed answer to a question I had on her video in the comments. And he said their discussion was not about paganism in general. It was specifically about Wicca. So specific deities, weren't worth, they were not addressing this, the attributes that certain deities are given. They were talking about the divine feminine and masculine in general. He said in his comments to me, it was more what qualities we decide are feminine and what are masculine. Why is air masculine? Why is it seen as projective, active? And why is water feminine, receptive, and passive? And I love the way he said passive with a question mark and then kind of said, you know, look at the women you know. Are they passive? <laughs> no, we aren't. <laughs> And his comment then, which made a great deal of sense, was in this modern day and age, the divisions, male and female, don't make sense to him. They seem artificial. And so Wicca starts losing him. I certainly understand that. And I think it's why Wicca's not for everybody. But I wanted to share what it was like from this Wiccan's perspective. I see nothing but power in it. An understanding of balance is so important to the traditionalist. And yes, we use the divine masculine and feminine as perhaps our greatest examples of that balance. As he mentioned, air and fire seen as masculine and projective. Water and earth seen as female and receptive. Well, I've not personally related to the concepts of active and passive, I do relate to the concepts of projective and receptive. I do at the most basic level. The level of a child, I suppose, that ladies have the innie and guys have the Audi. <laughs> but I don't want to make a joke out of it because it really is about that, about assigning what appears to be gender to these roles. But the roles are all equally powerful. There is nothing more strong than the ability to be receptive, to absorb, to take things in, and to transform them. There's nothing more powerful than the ability to project, to stir up, to create out of that kind of energy. It's two different kinds of energies, both equally powerful. Now in the world of Wicca, where we honor the god and the goddess. It makes great sense to balance those elements from the perception of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. What we honor in the entire turning of our spiritual year, that which is eternal, the goddess, the divine feminine, and that which lives and dies, the divine masculine, can also be seen the same way. What cannot be eternal about the power of the masculine divine, what cannot be of death, of the power of the divine feminine. We chose along the way to assign attributes. The difference between the way I feel this and the way it can look to someone who doesn't practice as I do is we may have assigned these attributes those which align with the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculines. But we don't prescribe them. And I think what I read and what Jer shared with me, because it was very well put, is that feeling that was all very prescribed. In fact, what did he say? He said, artificial. So first, to the traditionalists, it's about the power of duality. That everything exists at the same time in our cosmos and that ascribing something to be traditionally feminine or traditionally masculine is a way of 
capturing it and relating to it. It is not about limiting the power of either. It is also, and I think this is why this makes more sense to those of us who have adopted this practice in our personal spirituality. It is not as specifically about gender as it may seem. We honor the goddess in all her forms. We honor the God in all his forms. In the end, they are all aspects of something they represent jointly. It's strange to say, a bit of a conundrum I know to those who don't follow this path, that while it looks like it's about the boys and the girls, it's not. Because the goddess is all of us. We are her. She is within all of us. The God is all of us. We are all within him. This conception of what appears to be male and female, which at the spiritual level are archetypes and symbols, but actually stand outside of gender. I agree with what Jer is telling us. Wouldn't a practice be equally as powerful if those genders were not present? Why can't fire just be all of the powers of fire without making it male? Why can't earth be all the powers of earth without making it female? We could say then, why do we have to have a goddess and a god? Why can't we turn to one thing that embraces all of the attributes of the divine? Why do we have to have a wheel of the year that teaches us very different lessons from the perspective of the divine female and the divine male? Why can't we just have a year that teaches us? Well, that would work perfectly, and it would be something other than Wicca. I relate to the power of the divine feminine as goddess, as the traits of water and earth, and as what she represents in the turning of the wheel of the year. And I also relate equally to the God as the masculine divine, as fire and air, and as his unique perspective on the turning of the year. That's really what it comes down to me a shifting in spiritual perspective, a balancing of energy, different ways to look at things. Do I get it though? If I visit a circle that honors only one deity, that does not see the elements as aligned to the divine masculine or feminine, it works perfectly fine for me in those circles. We seem to be touching on the same things, just getting there from a different perspective. I have always enjoyed in Wicca this feeling of being able to look at everything from two perspectives. The receptive and the projective to me are both extremely powerful spiritual and magical perspectives. The thing is there is a multitude of perspectives. All this does is have us look at something from a perspective to realize that we've only begun to look at it from all the perspectives we possibly can. I don't find it limited or prescribed. I do see why Jer does. To me, it's about a constant shifting in the way I look at something and from what perspective. It doesn't feel prescribed to me. It doesn't feel, I want to use his word, artificial. Mm, artificial in the sense that we've declared this way of looking at it, I don't know, it seems to me just about any way we declare to look at something spiritual is a perspective and therefore it's artificial. We created it, we invented it, it's the way we look at it. I always just really resonated with that we can take on duality, a balance in the sense of there's more than one way to look at things. Yeah, I've played over the years with looking at the receptive powers of air and 
of fire and the projective aspects of water and of earth. But when I work my magics, when I want to call on specific energies, I really like having a more prescribed magical spiritual relationship to each of those four. And it comes back to me. I wonder if it doesn't come across and if it's really difficult to share. This whole gender thing is never about gender to me. It's male and female at a level of energy that is complete and whole within each of us at the level of gender, but it is not about gender. I don't know if I ever understood that, the great power of it, until I was a young pagan exploring, invoking the God within me and the goddess within my partner who was male. I learned a lot from that experience. What they were trying to teach us about gender being non-existent, even in our practices of honoring God and goddess and the feminine and masculine divine. I don't think I ever understood that at the theoretical level. But then when I started feeling all of the energies within me, when I started to want to reach out to very specific sets of energies, when I began doing magical workings, it started making sense to me that this concept of the masculine and the feminine was simply two perspectives, whole and complete, within the cycle of the year, within the elements, and within us and within our gods. It was about always being able to recognize strengths in all of its forms. That a practice that honored nothing that even looks kinda like gender would be a perfectly fine practice. It's all about the relationships we have with these things. My first reaction was, what's wrong with the power of earth and water as feminine and receptive? To me, it's like the ultimate in that kind of power. But I do get what he's referring to. For me, though, it wasn't artificial. And why is it's not as prescribed in my mind as it may look to someone else who doesn't practice as I do? To me, there's a complete freedom in it. There is a, an exploration of the gods and us at every level through this expression of the concept of the masculine and the feminine divine. And I think there's a great deal of power in embracing both of them. So speaking of perspectives and shifts in perspectives, I think the relationship to this that I have is simply a different perspective. I would think if I looked at the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine as being prescribed and limiting each in their own, I would not be working with them. That's why I understand so much what Jared was saying. I don't know if I've succeeded in getting across why it's not that way for me. I just know that relating to concepts of receptive and projective powers is freedom for me. It always takes me out of the place I'm at to consider what something might be. And I don't have a problem with it because I don't see that it, by mention of feminine or masculine, is truly a link to gender. Interesting conversation. I think there'll be more videos on this topic because it's a fascinating one. And I do think it's one that separates us. We don't feel it or practice it the same, therefore is a gap between what we know and understand of each other. I think these are bridge building videos. I'm going to stay in this conversation. I really do think it's a fascinating one. I wish you all mirth and reverence. Merry part.